where can I find one? So she's referring to a man that will take care of you. And this is my theory. If I was not already married, this is what I would do. And take this with a grain of salt because I met my husband at 19. So I really haven't been in the dating scene for 10 years. I was going to look for a man. I would go to a country club or a golf course. Hear me out, this is why I would do it. Golf is expensive, so you know this man has a good job. Are you sure? You're gonna need to take what I say with a grain of salt as well because I've only been golfing once, but to be fair, I was drunk and I almost shattered a dude's rear windshield with a bad shot from a five iron that I wasn't apparently supposed to be using in the first place. However, I do know plenty of golfers. They're able to play while on a tight budget. They have older clubs, they play with inexpensive balls, and they also play at public golf courses. But we know that you're not referring to these kinds of men. You're referring to men who play at country clubs. Those places require memberships, and these kinds of men pay expensive fees to be able to enjoy playing their game in peace. They're not looking to pick up chicks, especially not the kind of chicks who don't know anything about their culture or lifestyle. And I'm no expert, but don't you need to prove that you're a member to even step foot on the property to use any of their amenities? Let me know because I'm not really sure. Golf takes patience and a lot of practice. So you know this man's gonna be dedicated. He doesn't give up. He likes a good challenge. He works hard. Like, golf is not an easy sport. Trust me, I golf. It's not easy. Third, if he golfs, we know he loves golf, and he probably golfs one, two times a week. So, there's your girl's day. Like, he's out of the house, and you got your own freedom. Not to mention all the cute outfits you get to wear and riding around in the golf cart. That is the worst idea I've ever heard in my life, Tom. Yes. Yes, it's horrible. This idea. Yeah, I'm sure golf is a difficult sport to master, but then again, so are a number of hobbies. It's not just exclusive to golf, but you know how a man masters anything? By focusing on his skills and abilities and honing them to be the best possible version of himself. Trust me, sister, he doesn't want to have to deal with a woman who knows nothing about golf. It's a waste of time, it's annoying, and it sucks the fun out of a game that he likes to play. Now, don't get me wrong, driving around in a golf cart sounds like a lot of fun, but I personally think that fun would be ruined if I had to show for a chick around who's clearly incapable of playing the game. And on a more subtle point, if you ever need some alone time from your significant other and you're incapable of asking, him having a golf hobby isn't gonna help you at all. That's funny because it's so true. <laughs> Do not settle for a 50-50 man. I swear to you, you will pay for it for the rest of your life if you do. First of all, let me just say how wonderful it is to date a man with a provider mindset. My man makes me feel so taken care of, safe, and protected like he would never let anything ever happen to me. He knows that I can cover my own tab and pay for my own things, but he wants to without expecting anything in return. For my man, who I'd consider high value, my sincere gratitude and warm smile is all that he needs. He has told me that my happiness is the most important thing to him and that seeing me happy makes him happy. I don't think that saying happy wife equals happy life came out of thin air. The poor are a filthy Thieving people. So in other words, you're treating your contributions to the relationship like a subscription service. So long as he's paying for a particular subscription, then he gets certain treatment. In your eyes, a high value man is not only a man who has a bunch of money, but also willing to freely spend it on you. And so long as you're not having to spend your own money on the things you want, you're somehow happy. And in return, you provide nothing because you assume he expects nothing except your smile, which means that your happiness comes with a price tag. And if that man has to buy your affection, then that means you don't have much value. But this does pose an interesting question. Let's say that the man has money but doesn't waste it on you and thinks you should be spending your own money if you want a particular trinket. Would that man still be considered high value or would he be one of those scrubs that you dread? When women are able to show up as relaxed, satisfied, and happy, this feeds back to everyone around them. And when I feel taken care of, I want to give back and make sure that all of his needs are also met. Now let's put the present aside and talk about what's at stake in the future. I am someone who thinks about the future very often and I have a clear vision on what I want my future to look like. I don't know about you girls, but I eventually want to start a family with my partner. So it's only natural that I want to date a competent man who has the emotional and financial capacity to become my husband someday. No one should dismiss the fact that being a wife and a mother is a full-time job. If I have a choice, I don't want to have to worry about 
going back to work quickly after I give birth to make ends meet. I don't want to take full responsibility for childcare and household management and also half of the income. It isn't fair to be all of the women and half of the man. Do you accept cash? But you're forgetting something, sister. You don't get a choice. Women control the bedroom. That goes without saying, but men control everything else. If that man doesn't want to marry you, trust me, sister, you're not getting married. And even if he does get married and starts a family with you, you don't get to keep your lifestyle. Being a mother isn't a job. It's a duty. You are responsible for raising those kids by keeping them safe and healthy. This is a standard set by humanity itself. And if that means getting a job and contributing to the household because the husband and doesn't make enough on his own, then that is what you're going to do. Nobody cares about your feelings because the well-being of your children are more important than your fifis. You don't get to demand entry into the workplace for decades and then return it when you don't want it anymore. The workplace isn't a store and it doesn't have a return policy, no matter how many receipts you keep. That's yours forever, sister. Also, realize that pregnancy is not 50-50. He can't put in 50% in carrying the child, giving birth, and breastfeeding. However, he could show up in different ways and at least take charge of the finances. It's really attractive when your man is able to say, Don't worry, let me take care of it. I got you, baby. Whenever he sees you struggling, that's the man you want in your life. You know, we only have one life to live, girl, so live it to the fullest. I know it sucks, but comb through all of the scrubs while dating, then end up with a nasty divorce. The divorce rate in the U.S. is 50% and the top three reasons are money, sex, and children. I don't want that for myself and I don't want that for you. I know that there are a lot of men that just want to tear down women and abuse women. I'm sure we'll see some of them in my comment section. But know that there are also a lot of men who don't care about your job and want to provide and treat you well. Give me some money. Give me some money. For crying out loud, woman, we've been saying that for decades. Men don't care about your career. That's something that you assumed we wanted because that's what you want in a man. But it's too late now. What do you think the life of a traditional bride is? Crystal Pepsi? You think it's just gonna come back because you nag a corporation to give it to you? In this economy? Yeah, good luck with that. You're telling women that they need to ignore a vast majority of perfectly good men to go after a population of men that is so rare that it doesn't even totally total 1% of the world's population. Now I get it, you hate your job and you want to live a life of ease and riches. Who doesn't? But that's not gonna happen. You wanted a career to live your life as a boss bay yas queen, thus meaning you have to contribute to a dual income household, which is the industry standard for raising a family now. There's no escaping it, woman, so maybe you should spend less time bashing men and more time working on your resume. Indeed! You need to be approaching men because they will not approach you. It's up to us to decide which men we want to date. Okay, once and for all, I'm going to tell you how to do it. This woman next to me is trying to ruin what I'm trying to tell you, but she will not because the knowledge must be spread. Do you mind? Get in your car. Thank you. It's just not the thing to wait for him to approach you. It's not going to happen. You know, people are scared these days, especially men. Yep, get out of here. Especially men are scared to approach you. So we need to be wise, okay? We don't want the guy who approaches every girl in the bar. We don't want him. We, we can miss him with that, okay? We want the guy who is out there at the gym somewhere, maybe at a bar, doesn't matter, but he's out. He's not on an app, okay? He's out. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost impressive how a modern woman can give some advice that is borderline solid and then ruin it with just an additional statement. Now, maybe I'm wrong on this one, but I don't think it's a smart idea to emasculate the kind of men you want by labeling us as scared. We're not afraid of you. We just don't care. We all know how you think. The majority of men you don't want because you're not willing to settle. And the men you do desire don't want you because they have no reason to settle. And for the rest of us, you told us to leave you alone. Because if we didn't, you'd crucify us on social media and potentially ruin our lives for no reason outside of the fact that we're not your type. So we did as you asked and left you alone. Now you call us cowards for doing so. But that's not going to stop you from trying to have it both ways, huh? Well, feel free, sister. None of us really care. So he's at the gym, okay? And you want to talk to him. But, you know, he's training with someone. Like, hi, hi. Like, what are you going to do? What 
what you're gonna do is you're gonna train next to him for a certain amount of time or if it's at a bar or whatever sit next to him or whatever you're close to him in the proximity you're gonna leave something when you leave your water bottle your phone if you're brave i wouldn't oh my phone's like my child no it's not like my child i love my child way more than my phone um not even a comparison liar 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 so you're gonna leave whatever it is right then you're gonna leave then you're gonna run back a few minutes later and you're gonna run up to him not up to him like in a crazy way but just walk next to him and be like oh my god have you seen my have you seen a blue water bottle i just left <laughs> it's like he gets to help you look Next time you see him, he might talk to you. Hey, hey, what's up? Hey, now you've got a point of contact. It's a trap. Well, of course, it's probably a trap. Yeah, well, there was a time when this was actually done. Traditional women used to do something like this, where she'd drop a handkerchief next to a guy she found attractive. And if he picked it up, then it opened up the door for a potential courtship. But here's the problem. This ain't the 19th century, and you have zero value. And doing this at the gym is one of the worst things you can possibly do, especially when you take into consideration that modern women have completely ruined the gym for men the day you realized you could turn it into a politicized minefield just so you could get some internet cloud. So now this man has to be on his toes and wonder if you're setting him up for some kind of a social media trap. And if he's not gonna help a chick who's squatting with too much weight, what makes you think he's gonna keep an eye on your garbage for you? It could be, oh, could you just watch my thing because suddenly you've got a phone call and you've got all your stuff set out, but the phone call is very important and you've walked out. And I know, so I don't want to play games. I don't want to play games. Fine then, if you don't want to play games, just go up and talk to them and be like, I find you very attractive. Would you want to go on a date with me? That's, that's no, just make it fun. Make up a reason to talk to them, do it. Like, even if they do nothing, it expands you as a person to be more out there. Because honestly, we want the men to chase us, but we need to be picking the men that are doing the chasing. I want you and you and you, not you, not you, or you. And I don't want the one from, from the dating app. I want the one who's out there in life doing life because that's what I want. I don't, I don't want to be battling with him later because he's still on the app. Like, I don't know. No, sir, I don't like it. This is part and parcel the kind of stuff that has completely destroyed human pair bonding and why men don't trust women anymore. If you're trying to make this fun for yourself, you're just showing how shallow and selfish you are because you're focusing more on how this guy can entertain you than whether or not he'd be a good match for you. Besides, I thought women like you didn't have time for games, so why are you playing them? Men will be more open to you if you just walk up to them and lay your cards on the table. It's a lot more efficient and jumpstarts things. But I get it, if you do that, then you're life isn't a fairy tale where everything is romantic and amazing and i know you can't have that and if you want to live that kind of life then that's on you woman just be ready to line the walls of your one bedroom apartment with boxes of wine because in this economy you're gonna need them And that's gonna do it for today's video, gentlemen and gents, and as always, if you find that my particular brand of comedy is bringing you to the brink of laughter, then why don't you scroll on down and click that like and subscribe button, ring the notification bell, leave a couple of comments, share this video, let's give the good old-fashioned middle finger to the YouTube algorithm. Keep on pushing it to the limit, gentlemen and gents, and until next time, peace out, homies.